Welcome to the panel on unlocking impact first investments from donor advised funds, otherwise known as DAFs. My name is Jackie Kaur, and I am a vice president for social investments at Social Finance. We are a national impact finance and advisory nonprofit. We work with public, private, and the social sectors to develop and manage impact first investments and other innovative financing solutions that generate positive outcomes for people and communities. We use the term impact first investing because financial returns are secondary. This is a bit contrary to the traditional impact investing pitch to, do, to investors and partners, which is typically along the lines of you shouldn't have to compromise financial return to achieve social impact. On the other hand, we like to say you shouldn't have to compromise social impact to achieve financial returns. We recently, thanks to support from the Sorensen Impact Foundation, embarked on a pilot with three different types of DAF sponsors to test different ways that they could work with their donors to allocate more DAF capital to impact first investments. And I'm really excited to have here today a panel representing our partners on this pilot. Tanya Shadoan, Senior Director of Philanthropy for the Jewish Community Federation of Northern California. James Cutler, Senior Investment Officer for the Silicon Valley Community Foundation and Elaine Martin, Senior Vice President for Fidelity Charitable. Each of them will share with you why they chose to offer impact first investment opportunities to their donors. What types of offerings did they provide to their donors and the lessons learned from their experience to date? I'm now gonna turn over to Tanya to share her experience to start with. So at the Jewish Community Federation and Endowment Fund based in San Francisco, we set out with four key goals. The first was to move philanthropic capital off of the sidelines. And that really meant moving it out of traditional investments or cash and into something impactful. The second was to bring our community together so that we could have collective impact as a group by pooling funds. The third was to broaden our view of what it means to do philanthropy beyond grant making and to include impact lending and other impact investing opportunities that will come in the future. And finally, we wanted to enable the recycling of capital. So the ability to use it more than once over time, sending it out into the community in a loan, bringing it back or as a recoverable grant, bringing it back, using it again. So how we plan to do this was we set a goal of $5 million of capital mobilized in two geographic areas, the Bay Area and Israel, in four thematic areas, which were focused on affordable housing, small business relief in the COVID environment, sustainable agriculture practices for small farmers, and nonprofit financing solutions. And overall, over the past nine months, we have managed to mobilize $6.2 million from 34 donor advised funds and supporting foundations. It's roughly $5.3 million in the Bay Area and about a million dollars in Israel. The most exciting thing we found was that we've been able to mobilize capital from about 7% of our DAFs. So that is a great start, although we would like to see that number grow to 10, 20, 25% of our DAFs. In terms of learnings, there are probably three key areas I would say we had the biggest learnings in. The first was to start small and simple. Don't bite off more than you can chew. It's a lot to do this and there's a lot to be learned. So start simple and then build from there. The second is to choose great partners. The people that you work with, whether it's partners like Social Finance who helped us pilot this whole platform, to the CDFIs who are borrowing the money from us as institutional lenders, those are the partners that we're working with and we're very proud of the ones we've selected. That has been a key to our success so far. The third is to be both strategic and opportunistic. We have a roadmap, we have plans over time of what we want to do and how we want to continue to expand this out. But when opportunities arise along the way that may not have been on our roadmap, we want to be able to be open and, and adaptable so that we can respond to them and jump into something quickly. So opportunism has been very helpful for us so far. 
And finally, we want to make sure that um, as advice, people think about testing and iterating also on the operational side. It's not just the what, but how you support these initiatives from the back end. What is the way that you fulfill? How do you bring donors along, both the education as well as the fulfillment, the tracking? That is all critical to being able to do this consistently and at scale. Hello, everyone. At the Silicon Valley Community Foundation, we partnered with Social Finance to start the Recoverable Grant Pilot. Our objectives in entering into the pilot was to make the full spectrum of tools available to our donors to create more impact in their philanthropy. When we look at the capital spectrum, and by that we mean uh, anything from traditional grants at negative 100% rate of return, to recoverable grants as return of capital, to um, loans, equity, and additional investment tools that may have a positive return, financial return. How do we make all of those tools available to our donors and that they're all working together to create the impact that we want in our community? So we engaged with social finance to start a recoverable grant pilot in which we sourced, diligenced, and packaged impact investment opportunities structured as recoverable grants and offered them to our donors in thematic packages. What we learned is that even though we've been offering impact investments as an option to our donors for a number of years, we saw only a limited number of donors truly engaging in the impact investing process. So what we learned is that impact investing, um, one, needs to be personalized to the donor, make sure it really meets their philanthropic ideas, and two, it does need some handholding. What we needed to do is go out there and find those investments for our donors, complete the due diligence on our own, uh, package them together, and bring them to our donors in a really uniform package and say, here's where we think there's an opportunity to invest your money. Here's why we think you should invest your money here. And here's how SBCF is going to help you along the way. And what we found is that by doing this, we had a much greater response to a recoverable grant pilot. Uh, raised about $2.2 million in, in over a course of uh, roughly one calendar quarter, um, including in bringing new gifts from new donors who had not previously held donor-advised funds with the Community Foundation. In doing so, we were able to mobilize more uh, DAF capital for community impact, engage our donors to have more personalized and deep relationships, and help craft a new chapter in the philanthropic journey so that when a donor comes to us, they can say, you know, this is what I'm passionate about. Here's how my grants are going to play an impact. Here's how my investments are going to play an impact. And here's what my overall portfolio looks like as a philanthropist. At SPCF, we were grateful to partner with social finance. Uh, we were grateful to put this money into the community. And we look forward to continuing um, to deploy more capital in more ways and use the entire capital spectrum uh, to make impact in our communities. Hi. As James and Tanya have already shared, impact investing has been of major interest to our donors over the last five to six years. And at Fidelity Charitable, we have four primary ways that you can participate in impact investing. So the first is, of course, you can work with your financial advisor to create a, a strategy and a portfolio. And we see a lot of our donors are actually choosing that as a, as a methodology. The second is that we are seeing an increased number of donors, about four and a half percent of our donors are actually choosing to select one of our ESG impact pools um, in their donor advised fund. And then now we've started working with both recoverable grants and social finance, of course, is a key partner in that, um, and with the CapShift platform, which has been a really great way to focus on both thematic and issue project focused um, impact investments that are time bound. And, you know, one of the things we've noticed over the this course of the um, evolution of our impact investment strategy is that donors are still very much on a learning journey. They are interested in figuring out how do they mission align alongside um, partnering with their impact and uh, their investment strategy and bringing those two things together. And, um, and as a result, Many of the impact investment recoverable grants that have come to us are ones that are donor led, a donor who already has a passion for a nonprofit, a donor who already has um, a deep history with that organization and says, hey, I can see a way of doing a quasi loan to help with a bridge fund or to participate in, in a, a new initiative that they may not be able to have 
pursued before. And so the way the recoverable grants have um, have worked has included social impact bonds, um, bridge funding for nonprofits, and then increasingly the this idea of, of, a, um, of a loan type fund. And as we think about what are some of the challenges that our donors are facing and the learning that they're having, the first one is, even though there's an interest in this area, there's still a lot of education that's necessary. We've been doing a lot of events to try and stimulate energy and, um, and enthusiasm around this space because it's an area we know that many of our donors are already, they've already put the money into their DAF and they want to go further. Um, and so we've been trying to do donor education events, peer learning events, and opportunities to bring projects forward that they can participate in. And that's been one of um, the most exciting ways that our donors have been able to participate is by saying, okay, I already care about this organization, whether it's Partners in Health or um, in the case of the social finance initiative, uh, the up fund and, and job and workforce development. And so those are ways that donors have been able to put in their strategy around um, partnering their passion for a cause and a mission and, and really um, aligning that with their impact in, uh, investment strategy. Um, and I would say that the biggest learning that we have had is that this is an ongoing process. If a donor has started an impact investment um, strategy through their ESG portfolio, that is often the first step to then trying a recoverable grant or wanting to play in the cap shift platform. Um, and so we're hoping that this is going to be an opportunity for donors to actually engage in multiple ways and see themselves as grant makers and investors simultaneously rather than um, as one or the other. Thank you very much, Tanya, James, and Elaine for sharing your thoughts and lessons um, on your experience to date in engaging donors and impact first investments. For everybody participating, for the audience participating on this panel, we look forward to answering your questions on the Slack channel. Thank you again.